please do not directly copy 8-bit Ryan's thumbnails because you can get in trouble with copyright. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. So a month ago I got a comment from Super Bonnie Brandon asking if I could do a tutorial on how to make thumbnails like 8-bit Ryan and I said yeah sure. So for this video we're going to take a look at how to make your thumbnails look like this. Right, whoa, what's that? So what we pretty much want to do is just get ourselves a jump scare. Anything that's right in your face. The closer the better. Oh, oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, where is it? So that's perfect, that's what we need. Okay, so for the thumbnail, all we need is a fringe, and you're gonna need a headset as well. And now all you gotta do is make a reaction face, like as if you've just seen something really scary. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get ourselves the reaction. So this is for the thumbnail, and the best way to do this is you can pretty much drag it into your video editor, and most of the video editors that are up to date will let you take a screenshot. So they will let you take a little snippet or take a screenshot of the frame which you are previewing. So I'm using Sony Vegas Pro 17 and I'm gonna go to the part where the best moment happens or the best reaction. So in Sony Vegas Pro 17, the screenshot button is right at the top here. So you have the same icon as the save, but it will say save snapshot to file and all you got to do is click it go on desktop and let's just call it reaction and then save it next up we pretty much want to do the same thing but we need to do it with the gameplay so we need to have a look at the gameplay and have a look at a part where it is right in your face let's hop on over to photoshop and actually start this so just like always file and then new in here you want to set it to 1280 times 720 75 resolution pixel slash inch RGB color, 8-bit, transparent, and then once you're ready, press create. Next up, you just want to drag in the background. Now, what I'm going to do, because I have my face cam in it, I'm going to go ahead and copy a texture from here. So from this corner, I'm going to press Control J, and then I'm going to press Control T, move it up, and then right-click on it, and then flip vertical. I'm going to put it up here. You want to hold Shift, and then click on the bottom one, Go to convert smart object and then rasterize layer. Go to the healing brush tool right here. Get a texture from here and then just pretty much blend it all together. Now that it's just the image on its own, you want to left click and drag this into your first project and then let go of it. Another thing that we need to get rid of is the little dot here. So the cursor and that's quite simple. Same as last time, healing brush tool. Make it a little bit smaller with a square bracket on your keyboard. You want to hold alt and then just copy the textures over. If you want to do, you can go over to the clone tool and this will copy the textures without smudging them as much. Next up, we're going to get the reaction. So you want to drag this into a separate new area, pen tool. The pen tool is the most accurate one and the best one, but it's a little bit more advanced. With a pen tool, you want to make sure up here it says path. And then you pretty much want to left click once and then left click again. That will give you a straight line. If you want a curved line, all you got to do is left click and drag the left side of the mouse. And that will pretty much give you a curved one. But then afterwards, you need to hold alt and then click on this to make sure it doesn't clone the curved one right here. For example, if we do another one, it'll curve it. If you make a mistake, you can undo it by pressing Control and Z. You can also cut a little bit of it so it makes it nice and sharp. As you can see, I'm not exactly on the line, so it cuts it a little bit.
Once you've gone all around it, you want to go back to the very first one and then to connect it up, all you got to do is wait until the circle pops up and then left click and that will connect it all up. Now that you've connected up, you want to go right at the top here and then you want to click on mask and this will pretty much mask the background. We can then go ahead and zoom back in and fix this bit here. So you want to also get yourself a selection inside of it. And as you can see, it's already starting to cut it because of the mask. So quite simply, get rid of the background. Now you want to also keep the hair in because we will fix that a little bit later on, but there's a different method of doing it. You just pretty much want to click on the mask itself once and then click off it and that will deselect it. So we can do this side as well. And then same as last time, just let the hair have a little bit of an edge to it so we can remove that. Click on the mask, pressing control, clicking on the thumbnail, and then going over to the selection tool, select the mask, and then in here you can use the refine edge tool. And then this will pretty much refine the hair like so. And that does a pretty good job of removing the hair. As you can see, it may leave a few things behind, but we can always remove them. Now the right side is a little bit harder and more tricky to do. So all we're going to do is fix the edge and then leave the other part. So we're going to do it up to there. Go to new layer, press OK. As you can see, the headset has gone a little bit there. So we're going to fix that using the pen tool, creating the part that's missing about to there. Go to selection, zero pixel, and then get the healing brush tool, copy the textures over from the side. Press control D. So yeah, that's not looking too bad. Once you're happy with it all, all you gotta do is combine these two together. So hold shift, click on the bottom one, convert smart object, and then rasterize layer. Once you've done that, you want to left click and drag this into your main project, which is this one. Zoom out a little bit using alt and the scroll wheel. Then you want to press control T to resize it, drag the corners in and put it to where you prefer. What you want to do is you want to move your reaction to the right side of the screen and you want to adjust it to where you want it to go. You want to go in the background and then you want to press control T and then right click on it and go to flip horizontally. And then you want to hold shift and then move him over to the left side of the screen. You want to get yourself a new layer. And then you want to go to the brush tool, get yourself a nice soft edge. So this one, put the size on a little bit bigger. So use the N square bracket. You want to go to color, set it to red. You want to hide your reaction and give it a bit of a glow for the background. Make it smaller or larger. I'm going to use the eraser tool and just get rid of the edges a little bit. Set this one to overlay and put it to 38%. Create a new layer. And for this one, we're going to make the eyes glow. So if you get yourself another red color and put it around the eyes, set it to litten and leave it on 100%. And then once again, also do it on the weapon as well. Set it to litten and put it to 52. Get yourself a brightness and contrast. Set the brightness to 3 and the contrast to 100. Get yourself a hue and saturation, set this one to nine, and then put this one underneath. You want to open up a flare and open it in a new tab. Once you've done that, you want to get yourself a new layer, get yourself a bucket tool, set it to a red color, and then set this one to color. In here, you want to hold shift and then click on the bottom one, and then you want to convert smart object and then rasterize layer. Then you want to go back to the first tool, drag this over to your project, press control T to resize it, make it smaller. You want to use the eraser tool, make it a little bit smaller and go around it. You want to set this one to screen. You want to press control J and then also press control T and then right click on it and flip horizontally, move it over to the other side, double left click to apply it. You want to get yourself another optical flare. Same as last time, get the bucket tool and create yourself a new layer and then set this one to color, hold shift, combine them together, convert smart object and then rasterize layer. Move this over to your main project. 
you want to press Control T, resize it, give it a tilt, use the eraser tool, set this one to screen, you want to press Control J, press Control T, make it a little bit smaller, and then put the opacity to 52 on this one. You want to hold shift and then put these two above your reaction. You want to bring back your reaction and then you want to set this one to screen. You want to hold control and then click on the thumbnail, get yourself a brightness and contrast, set the brightness to minus three and then set the contrast to 75. Click back on your reaction and then get yourself a saturation and put it to seven. What you want to do next is you want to do the same. So hold control, click on the thumbnail, get yourself a new layer. This time we're going to get rid of the tint. So if we zoom in right here, you want to get yourself the brush tool. You want to set the layer to color and then set the color to black. And then you pretty much want to make it a little bit bigger and then take it away from here. Same again on the other side as well. And then turn down the opacity to 60%. Go back to your reaction, get yourself a new layer, and then hold control, click on the thumbnail again, get yourself the brush tool, but this time you want to get yourself a red color, make it larger, and then you want to pretty much put it on the shoulder. Press control D, set the layer to litten, put it to 60%, get yourself another layer again, hold control, click on your person, and then you want to go up here to where the hair is a little bit off color, we're going to get the brush tool, set it to a brown color or the color of your hair, make the brush smaller, paint on top of it, and then set it to color, pray it to 60% opacity. If you wanted to, you can also get yourself a layer on top of that one, get yourself a black color, and then just paint on top of it a little bit, press control D. And then that color, you just want to turn down the opacity. Next up, you want to get yourself some shading. So once again, hold control on your layer. So you only select yourself, get yourself a new layer. And then in that layer, get yourself the brush tool with a black color and pretty much make some dark areas. You want to press control D to deselect and then set the opacity to 45. If you want to apply a bit more shading, you can create yourself a separate layer and then do the same. But this time you can keep the opacity a little bit higher. So as you can see, it's a lot darker now, or you can turn it down. Here are some ideas for you to make it more personalized and make it unique. So make it more of your own style. You can simply add a red color to it and this makes it pop out a lot more. It's quite simple really. All you do is create yourself a blank new layer and then set it to overlay and it's got to be a red color. But you need to make sure it's underneath your reaction. Another idea is you can get yourself a solid border, for example, like this. And once again, you put it at the bottom. You also need to make sure that when you do create it, you create yourself a mask where the outline is of your reaction. So for example here, if we toggle it off and on. So to do that effect, it's quite simple. All you got to do is hold control, click on your reaction, press the mask, and then you want to press Control and I to invert it if yours is the other way around. And there we go. Another idea is the one that I used to do quite often before when I played games on my gaming channel. And that is quite easily get yourself a red glow around the border. To do this, go to blending options. And in here, you get yourself a inner glow. Set the opacity to 100%. And then color dodge. That's what makes it look really good. Once again, same color, red color, and then you want to put the size to 166. Zero choke and leave everything as normal. Final idea is the 3D pop. So if you want to make your image look more 3D and make it look like it's popping out the thumbnail. Okay, so to create the 3D pop, it's quite simple really. All you got to do is make sure you press Control J on your reaction face, hide the one underneath, and then set this one to normal. Next up, all you got to do is get yourself some grid lines. If you don't have the ruler selected, you can press Ctrl R and that will toggle it off and on. And the reason for this is so we can easily snap onto the edges and snap onto the bits that we want. So you pretty much want to go around the border. You also want to get yourself one for the middle. So the Y axis and the X as well. 
And you pretty much want to just keep going left and right until they snap onto the middle. You will know once it's in the center. You want to get yourself the pen tool. And then you pretty much want to start off with this corner. You want to get yourself the second point. And then you want to hold shift so it creates a straight line. Create one at the bottom. One on the left corner. And then connect it back up. Go to selection. Set it to zero. And then you want to get yourself the bucket tool. And then in the new layer you want to fill it in with a black color. You want to press control D. Press Ctrl J and then press Ctrl T. Flip it horizontally, move it to the other side so it's nice and equal. Press Ctrl H, make sure there's no gap in between. And then you want to hold Shift and then connect these up and then convert to Smart Object and then rasterize this layer. Next up, you want to get yourself a solid color, a solid white underneath that. You want to go in the background and press Ctrl J, get yourself a copy of it. You want to hold Ctrl, click on the black area we've just created hide this one and then create yourself a mask and you want to make sure that the colors underneath it like so and then you want to hold shift toggle it off we're going to press ctrl h to get ourselves the grid lines again go to the pen tool and go around it And then once you've <clears throat> and then once you've gone around it, you want to go back to the first one and then connect it up. Once you've done that, you want to hold shift, retoggle the selection, get yourself a selection, 0%, go to the bucket tool. You want to make sure you're on the mask. So if you click on it, and then you want to pretty much fill in that area and then press control D. If you wanted to, you can also create yourself a new layer on top of that one, get yourself a white color, and then you can make the edges a little bit soft, and make them more white if you wanted to. And you can also set it to a effect or you could just simply turn down the opacity. 